I'm Kelly from B&H, and this is our third video on HDSLR for the holidays. Our expert on HDSLR, Matt, is here with us again. And in this video, we're focusing on a couple of ways to accessorize our rigs. Matt will show us just some of the products that increase the functionality of your HDSLR setup. So a huge aspect of HDSLR shooting is sound. It can be a little bit difficult with a camera that's originally supposed to be a still camera, but there are a lot of accessories out there that make it a lot easier. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, HDSLR is notoriously rough when you get into audio recording. Uh, they're not designed for that. So there's a few things you can do. Over here we have a uh, shotgun video mic uh, plugged right into the side of the camera. Um, and then we have a stereo video mic also plugged directly into the mic input on the camera. Very good options, uh, improve the quality, both, uh, both very good options from Rode. Great, so what are the main differences between these two? Sure, so the Rode Video Mic Pro is a shotgun mic. Uh, means it's uh, more directional, more selective, a lot like a telephoto lens. It's gonna choose a very selected area of audio. Uh, we have the stereo video mic which is going to collect a lot more ambient sound. It's uh, great at tracking direction and, and more of a whole scene, um, but both very good options. So this would be better for an interview style where you're pointing the mic directly at somebody that you're interviewing and you're just concerned about their audio, blocking out the rest, and this is actually if you want the rest and you want to get everything around you. That's exactly right. Okay, great. That's exactly right. And so if you, if you need something that's a little bit higher quality, a little bit higher bit rate of sound, you can always use an, an external XLR recorder, which would record it, the tracks to a separate disc, and you can uh, match those up in post-production. Uh, manufacturers such as Sony, Tascam, and Zoom uh, all make great XLR recorders. Uh, also a very good option to bring you up to a professional level of audio. Wonderful. So you can actually use a uh, like professional microphone with an XLR input, and you can record maybe with this guy as you're interviewing one person and hook up the other person to a wireless mic and hook that up to another external. That's exactly right. Great. Well, sound is definitely an important aspect in terms of HDSLR shooting. We're going to talk about some other accessories, but if you're interested in any other videos, we have many on our b &H channel. Please check them out. As with any image capturing, lighting is a huge and crucial aspect. Matt's going to take us through some of the HDSLR options out there. Yeah, in HDSLR lighting is extremely important. Uh, and in HDSLR lighting, the output and the color balance is also very important. Over here we have a Switronics LED light attached to the Switronics PowerBase 70 battery pack. Uh, this particular light you can use uh, in different positions as well, but it does have a filter built right into it. So you just flip that filter up or down, depending on what the color balance is that you need. Very simple option. Great, so you don't have to take any separate gels and then attach them to light after. That's right, you don't need to cut any gels out and tape them on there. Obviously you could if you needed to, but this has it built in. Uh, over here on the ICANN Multi-K, no need to cut those filters out as well. Uh, the color balance is built directly into the LEDs. Uh, just a simple button, push button, and change that color balance, no problem. So you don't need gels at all, it's actually just built into the light itself? Just built right into the LEDs. It's also a very nice light because it's, uh, it runs on six AA's, uh, so easily mounted to an HDSLR, nice compact, simple to use package. Uh, over here we have a light that's similar to that, it's the Switronix uh, Torch Bolt 200. Uh, it, it also has variable color temperature options and variable output. It's an extremely powerful light, uh, so you can use it on camera or off camera. Um, it's a very good option as well. Yeah, it's definitely a very intense light. I've used it before, so you can manipulate the intensity as well. It is, and, and when it's up all the way, it might be a good idea to use it off camera so you're not blinding your subject. Uh, they can look into the camera with more ease, uh, but it is a, it's a great light. Uh, and in the center here, we have a unique light out of the, out of the bunch. It's the Rotolite. Uh, it's designed to either be attached via an adapter onto the hot shoe of the camera, or you can pop that out through the center and just attach it onto a shotgun mic, which is what it was originally designed for. Uh, it's a great light. I also like the catch that it has in your eye because it has that circular effect, much like a ring light. Yeah, it does. It has a very unique shape, creates that, that different luminosity there. Uh, it also has the filters. Um, they're gel filters. They're pre-cut. They're actually in the back of this package here, so they're not quite as quick as pushing a button, but you can easily change that in the field. You have it there ready to go. So you can still manipulate the color temperature and kind of cut down the light if you wanted to do that as well. That's exactly right. There are a lot of great options out there for the HDSLR shooter in terms of accessories. Matt's going to take us through a few more options right now. Sure. One of the more popular accessories is something to accessorize the viewing experience of an HDSLR. The LCD screens sometimes are a little bit lacking as far as the angle. Um, so something as simple as a LCD hood from Velo, 
uh, can really enhance the shoot. It just slides right on the flip out LCD screens on many of the cameras. Great, so if you're shooting outdoors and you're in harsh sh sun or anything like that, it'll actually help you view it. Right, exactly. It'll create a little bit of shade on the screen and cut down some of those reflections that can be pesky when shooting uh, video. Uh, another feature or another option that is a little less uh, simple is an electronic viewfinder. Uh, this Kinotechnic electronic viewfinder is a great option. It's basically a, a very small uh, monitor, has all the high-end monitor features built into it, and it has a optical viewfinder viewing into it. Great at blocking out that unwanted light, so really, really wonderful if you're shooting outside. has an HDMI input, and it's actually an HDMI, HDMI loop through to go out to a, another monitor if need be. Great, so it allows you to use your rig like you would use a typical video camera and be able to actually use it as a viewfinder up into the eye. Right, ergonomically it does create a really simple experience and uh, harkens back to the uh, more typical ENG style cameras. Um, something that is also a little bit more advanced is an external monitor. This can be very simple as far as monitors go and it's very complex. This particular monitor is actually a little more complex because it is also an external video recorder. This is the Atomos Ninja 2. Uh, it can be used to record that, that video file uh, directly from the camera. Great, and I see you have it hooked up to the D800, which we had discussed in a previous video, one of the only DSLRs out there that can actually record externally. That's right, Nikon this year, 2012, really upped the ante and uh, improved m now three of their cameras to have a clean HDMI out so it can record two recorders like this Atomos Ninja 2. Great, so these are some great viewing options while you're recording. How about in terms of control? Sure, uh, there's there's two really neat products out right now. One is from Oki, attached to this rig and camera over here, and from Monfrotto. Both of these controllers allow you to control the focus electronically uh, of the Canon cameras only at this point. Uh, so you just plug it right in through the USB port, um, turn the dial, and it will control the focus of the lens. So it's not an autofocus, but it is a manual control of the electronic motors. Great. So these are all features that can allow you to work quickly and efficiently, being able to control and manipulate your image as you're viewing it clearly. That's right. The, the Manfrotto controller here and the Oki controller here both connect through USB for easy control. We also have uh, this year some Sam Yang lenses that are designed specifically for HDSLR. HDSLR is very popular and they're riding the coattails in and, and uh, adding a couple of features that a lot of HDSLR users are looking for. They have built-in gearing on the lenses so it hooks into a manual follow focus and they also use T-stops now instead of F-stops. T-stops are a little bit more of a video and cinema based uh, light control system as opposed to an F-stop which sometimes is not as accurate. Great, right, and these ridges right here can work with a follow focus from Secudo or another rig. It's exactly right. Standardized teeth, they just intermesh. You don't need to mess around with any of those lens gears that you have to buy separately in many cases. Thanks, Matt, for showing us just some of the options we have out there for accessorizing our HDSLR rigs. These add-ons would greatly increase production value for the HDSLR shooter, and many would make wonderful and unique holiday gifts for the HDSLR filmmakers, videographers, and video fanatics out there. Happy holidays, everyone from B&H. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.